Singapore, like Taiwan, is facing rising infections despite having been successful in stamping out past outbreaks. For a closer look, Dr. Annalise Wilder-Smith from the National Technological University joins us live now. Um, as you know, Singapore has announced all these new measures. Um, tougher restrictions, are they the best way to stop uh, cases from climbing even further? Good evening. Indeed, uh, Singapore's measures are timely, they are necessary, and Singapore has done well in the past and it, and it will do well again. Um, clearly, there's a whole wide range of measures that we can take, and vaccine uptake is one of the most important. Uh, but as vaccine supply is still constrained, um, and as it takes time to vaccinate a population, until then, we still have to continue taking these um, measures to break the circuits. Dr. Waldersmith, what role do, the, do new variants play in these outbreaks we, we are seeing in places that have had previously low infection rates? <sighs> So indeed, the variants of concern, and the new one is the one from India, uh, they are characterized by high transmissibility, which means it is easily transmitted from person to person. So it's more contagious, it's more, it's easier to spread and we take, need to take more stringent measures to stop it. So the variants of concerns are indeed, as the word said, a, a real concern to the world and also to areas that have previously successfully uh, suppressed COVID-19. And I guess, you know, the big question is how can we break the cycle if we can ever break it, you know, of, the, of these constant lockdowns and restrictions? <sighs> So for the time being, as long as we are not fully vaccinated as a population, we need to re-establish all the measures that we know that are successful. And we know, now know how to contain this pandemic. And it's a full range of trying to minimize social contacts, uh, protecting with, with face masks, um, and, and trying to work from home as much as possible. So Singapore is taking the right steps at the right time. And it will then, because of these steps, not have to experience the tsunami of cases that some other countries in the region are experiencing in this very moment. We have seen several places once dominated by the pandemic now reopening. For example, those vaccinated in the US no longer need to wear masks. Is President Biden confident that the pandemic there is coming to an end or can he be confident in fact? So I think we have reason to be optimistic and confident that this pandemic will come to an end. To an end means that we still may have ongoing occasional transmission and a few cases. But what we want to see is a major reduction in these high number of deaths. We want to make sure that hospitals are protected from being overwhelmed. And that is the achievement. So if, and the US has achieved a very high vaccine coverage rate, so has Israel. And as Israel and both Israel and the US have now opened up, have uh, eased, have, uh, you know, there's easing of their restrictions, uh, even not a public use of, of face masks anymore. Um, and, and we will need to see if indeed, uh, you know, these, these variants of concerns enter those areas, those countries may need to tighten up again. But I think now with a high population, you know, especially the high risk population in the US and Israel being protected against severe disease, we will not see the, 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 the severe outcomes of, of, of this outbreak, of this pandemic. Thank you as always for your thoughts this evening, Dr. Annalise Wilder-Smith from Nanyang Technological University.